Estate planning after serious diagnosis. What are some of the specific things I'm now going to cover? Just really briefly, a story of Charles. And this is an illustration of what happens if there's no estate plan in the worst case scenario. So Charles, he had no estate plan in place, but he had millions of dollars. He had plenty of assets, no close family, few close friends, no estate plan. And we worked together. We, we had a meeting. We, we actually came to some pretty good conclusions. He, he named some people he trusted, some longtime friends to be his successor trustees. He wanted his assets to go to charity, to support nonprofits and scholarships. He didn't want them going to random relatives he hadn't talked to in decades. Long story short, we send him drafts and he reaches out to us and said, hey, what, what, what are these documents? Who, who is Bill Fix and the Paul Associates? What are you doing? I didn't ask for this. We said, Charles, we, we met just a couple of weeks ago. You, he didn't remember anything. So he had dementia and his dementia had gotten worse and worse and worse. So needless to say, we couldn't finish his estate plan. He didn't even trust us. He didn't remember meeting with us. So we had no estate plan. And what happened? His health declined. Nobody was empowered to help him. Adult Protective Services had to be called. The county got a conservatorship over him and county workers who were well meaning, but overwhelmed and not enough time, they took over his life. And public officials basically determined what happened to Charles after that. He didn't get the care he wanted. His assets ended up going to relatives. He had distant relatives he had never spoken with in years or hadn't spoken with in years. And it was a disaster. So I want to make sure that you're not in Charles's position. Um, so really quickly, for those of you who don't know our firm, this is what we do. We've been around we're celebrating 40 years uh, this year. We've helped thousands of families in California through these issues. We're featured in the national media. We do a lot of speaking about this, a lot of writing about this. Um, and this is what we do. We help families to protect their assets, to deal with taxes, protect their kids from divorce and lawsuits, things like that. But most importantly, we want to help people through the toughest moments of their lives, at least from the legal side of things. And we're very proud of that. And my own experience helps me every day with that. Why do you need an estate plan? Again, if you worked with us in the past or if you already have an estate plan, you understand this. But if you don't and if you need to share this with someone who doesn't have an estate plan, why? An estate plan is not about high net worth planning for dynastic families. It's about making sure that you're covered in a crisis or in a diagnosis and that people that you love are empowered, who you love and trust, are empowered to help you in those tough situations. Because If you don't have an estate plan in place, can be extraordinarily difficult, if not impossible, for people you love and trust to help you. And when you're going through a medical crisis, you don't want to have to think about these things. So you want to make sure you have that plan in place either before or you want to make sure you update it right after and make that part of those steps you take when you face that diagnosis. And to make sure your hard-earned hard assets go to the people that you love. And when you're dealing with this crisis, if it's a diagnosis, whether it's a stroke, a heart attack, um, an accident, dementia, a new heart issue or cancer, a cancer diagnosis, as my wife and I have been through, you and your family need to be prepared. And if you're unprepared, what happens? Well, your your life may end up in the courts. Your family may have to get a conservatorship. It may be an absolute nightmare. So I'd say the first thing to think about here, whether you've been through a challenging situation or not, is to talk to your family or your loved ones about this. And then instead of meeting with us, go fix in the poll or some attorney, you need to work with an attorney about this. We A big part of, of our job as attorneys is to help you get to the finish line, to, to identify the choices you need to make and then get those documents into place. When people try to do it themselves, I think most of the time they don't get done or they get done incorrectly. But you should talk to your family, especially if you're facing an issue and say, hey, are you guys ready and able? Step in and help me if and when I need it. That's the first thing. And then set that meeting with attorneys or I guess, you know what, set a meeting with an attorney first and we can help you down that process. I want to get four immediate recommendations after a serious diagnosis. If you get that phone call like I got, like my wife got like so many of our clients have gotten that it's either cancer or a heart issue or some serious issue. Four tips, things that I've learned on my own journey. One, get second and third opinions right away. If it's anything in question, just get them. Don't don't think that, oh, well, I, I know what's happening. You never know what the second and third opinion they're going to say. A second opinion helps save me from a bunch of unnecessary treatment and put me back in a great place. It, it, it let me know that I was actually going to be OK. And I needed that second opinion to get that. Uh, work with doctors that you like. You need to meet with lots of doctors. Choose to work with a medical team that is positive, that is not dour and negative, that can have a huge impact on your healing. I met with doctors in multiple places, Stanford, Kaiser, UCSF, and I can tell you the same types of meetings giving me the same information. Some of those meetings I left feeling like I was good. I was going to fight this. I was going to win. Other meetings I left feeling like I was done. Three, have a patient advocate with you at all meetings. What does that mean? It can be someone who you love. It doesn't have to be anyone specific who goes to meetings with you, who takes notes, who questions doctors, who's in the hospital with you whenever possible. 
you should have someone there with you. You can't keep track of it all yourself. And it doesn't have to be the same person every meeting, but you should have somebody there at every meeting. Keep a notebook, keep track of everything the best you can and catch your breath. When you face a serious medical issue, take a moment, reflect, deal with the immediate medical crisis, breathe, and then take that separate step. The next step really should be making sure your estate plan is up to date because that can have a profound impact on your care and on the protection of your assets and really on your ability to recover over the long term. But you don't need to think of it all at once. First, deal with the medical emergency, get that team together, have that patient advocate, and then address your estate plan if you haven't done it recently. When getting organized after a diagnosis, another tip. So if you face this, get help with this. You need some help pulling all your documentation together, insurance information, bank account information, financial information, get it all together because if you can't deal with this as you go through your challenges or as it gets worse, you need to make sure your loved ones are empowered to help, but they also know where your assets are and where your medical information is and where your insurance information is. And set discussions with people you've named in your estate plan. If you haven't recently, if you've named successor trustees or backups in your advanced directive, set those conversations with them because again, the future is now. If you face a diagnosis or a serious issue, they may be called upon. And if you're able to talk to them, do it. Let them know what's happening. Give them a heads up and they can do a much better job for you. Take time to reflect as well. You know, think about what really matters and make sure that your estate plan reflects that. So if you have a recent estate plan, it may not be up to date. When you face your own mortality, you think differently about things. You want to make sure that you have the right people empowered to help you. If you have an old estate plan, it might be people who are no longer even available or no longer part of your life. Make sure it's up to date. And are your assets, everything you work so hard for, just because you're facing your mortality doesn't mean, in fact, it heightens that need to think about, I've well, worked so hard for all this. Where is it all going? Is it going to the right places? Am I protecting it for future generations? Of course, if you want to contact us, it's easy to find us. You know, we can always review your estate plan. We can be that resource. If you or a loved one faces that diagnosis, we can find us easily at Gilfix and Gilfix.com, uh, 650-493-8070. It's pretty easy to find us online. I hope you got a lot out of this and I hope everybody is staying safe, sane, and healthy. Let's stay in touch. Thank you so much for joining me here today.